Hello and welcome. Hope you're doing alright. I am doing all good. It's the big move-in day, hopefully. Um, get some stuff moved around and then edit the beds a little bit and give it all a mulch and whatnot. And um, yeah, go from there really. So I do it with all this bit of a POV, but just a brief rundown. It's just mainly stuff like this fat cedera there on the left. It's not done too well. I think I underestimated how much the foliage on plants needs water just you know not the sort of because the bit above the bit that's green is open whereas that is under the roof so i take it that's what's killed it off but it might be something else but that's just what i'm reading into it assuming and we know what assumptions are the brother of so yeah a few other bits so take that fat cedar out um over here in this middle bed just in front of that conifer we've got the polyblepharum there which isn't doing too well so move that up by the canna between the canna and the lophosauria um there's a couple of ferns there that aren't doing too well take them out i've got a couple of hibiscuses to put in somewhere i've got loads of pots here there and everywhere as well over there i want to take some cuttings off of the giant honeysuckle the lophosauria next to the bench which is half brown i want to take that up and divide it um over here uh take out the bamboo take out these um things here out of these pots and divide them up ready for next year um and that bed hopefully get the tetrapanics in where that big bam bit of bamboo stick is sort of sticking out but the gingers look like they're about to flower so hmm, yeah i don't know um and yeah other such joyous things take this um tetrapanax what we what we think is a tetrapanax out of this pot here that obviously um come over with the asplenium and generally yeah give it a mulch as well so i'll collate everything together we'll see what we've got and sort of go from there i've also got the front garden to sort out it all links in because the front garden's got loads of ferns which half died some have recovered some haven't so i'll move them back out anything i haven't got space for i'll put out there and then the flower bed out there and do that so when it comes to my sort of by year does that make sense by yearly does by yearly mean every two years or every six months someone let me know but anyway my every six month thing when it comes i don't really feed anything to be honest with you i just feed the soil so at this time of year i go around spread a load of fish blood and bone over everything give it all a good dusting and then i make a mix up of mulch which is generally about three parts well rotted manure one part mushroom compost and one part ericaceous compost and then i just give that all a good weeding and put it on top and just you know don't dig it in or anything just leave it there and then in the summer i'll do the same in the spring i'll do the same but i'll use chicken manure pellets instead of flush bit and flush flip <laughs> it's too early in the morning fish blood and bone um and yeah so i do that in the, in the spring that's all about all i do really um apart from the camellias and there is something else i forget off the top of my head now um uh yeah whatever whatever else it is that likes it slightly acidic i'll i'll, I'll up the uh ratio of ericaceous on it so yeah we'll i'll collate everything together bring it out here We'll get started and then i'll go through it like a kind of pov because this sort of thing is kind of like a domino effect isn't it i need to just strategize which way i'm going to do everything um so you know it's going to be like i need to free up space in order to put stuff in to free up more space if that makes any sense but we'll go through it as we do it we know the fat cedar is going to come out so we'll take that out and we'll decide what goes in there we know that polyblo farm is going to come out so we we'll take that out we'll take out whatever else and then you'll see the madness when i've got about 40 plants along here i can't remember what any of them are and uh struggle to get them all in but yeah let's go from there bring everything through wife's going to love me bringing horse manure through the house at nine o'clock in the morning um and mushroom compost which is even worse smelling but it only sticks around for an hour or two in the house and a day or two outside so we get on it i'll give everything a clean up collate all my tools and uh, let's do this i'm excited haven't done it for a while okay without trying to dox myself or my wife's car um this is the front garden it's a bit of a kind of recovery zone zone for ferns uh you can see some have done well some haven't so last year this this was all gravel so i wanted to put some beds in so i've dug up all of that and then all the way to the right to the front 
you know very front of the driveway in that corner where that plant pot is all the way along there there's a channel and i just covered it back up just for now i just wanted to get some manure and whatnot in there so i can do it this year so the gist is these two that are in pots i want those pots for bamboo um so i'll put these in out here because they're variegated or whatever you want to call it and then we've got a few ones that we can use out the back there so we've got the there's four splenium scolopendriums you can see a couple of them have died and then right over there in the corner we've got uh, at the end we've got the fatsia spiders web and then there's a small bixonia um, next to that as well and we know they get quite vigorous if they survive so we'll move that and then what i'm going to do with this bit is all these rocks that are here that i've got kind of just lying around uh, as you do i'm going to put those against the wall to, to make up for the rain shadow and then i'll pull some rocks from out the back and line it with that if you sort of see what i mean you, you'll you'll see what i mean get better get to it but there you go but it's just essentially we've got some plants out here that we can play with so let's go back outside uh back out the back and get going okay so we'll start at the beginning or this one here rather um so main one is to get that fat cedar out as i said uh three things that i was sort of half contemplating putting in there in its place um one of them being a, a, a hibiscus but i'm pretty much growing the hibiscus just for the flowers and because it's in full shade i'm not sure if it ever will flower so that knocks that one out of the situation um the other one was the fatsia spiders web we know that'll do well there because it's shade and the other fatsias are doing all right and it will tie it in there um and then the other one was uh can't remember oh it was a it was a pretty tall fern the umbrella fern is it i can't remember what it is the ter terrace umbrosa um i've got one of them in a pot that i've had for a couple of months but i think that's going to be too similar to the scheffler like the form wise so fatsia spiders web it's going to be um my now the way i sort of design flower beds which you know each to their own but just to give you a brief overview each it's all set into zones there so this triangle bed is one zone the bit flat bit in between the two triangles or the two corners is another zone the corner is another zone the back bit is another zone that bed is another zone etc 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 and then each uh, zone has got vertical zones so there's six of them so one is leaning over the the side or ground cover two would be these ferns like the sort of first foot or two three is the top top half of the bottom half of the fence four is the bottom half of the top half of the fence five is the top of the fence and then six is anything above the fence and i like to have one of each number in each zone uh, is the idea so if we have a look in this one just as a brief rundown uh, our number one is going to be the maiden hair fern at the back there you can just see it oh, between the fat cedar and the shefflera number two is going to be all of these ferns here uh, three is going to be that Dixonia behind the Cyathea. Four is the Cyathea. Um, and then five and six will be the Sheffera when it grows up, if you see what I mean. And then I know that that's sorted and it sort of blurs the edges. So again, with this one here, we've got the two ferns either side of the Cyathea. They're going to be number one and two, which we can't see. Then we've got the Cyathea, which will be three and four. Then we've got the Fatsia, which will be four and five. And then we've got the Fig Tree, which will be five and six. And carry on all that around. Then I've got, I know I've got all bases covered. That's just the way my mind works. Um, and then I can fine tune it with regards to textures of foliage and whatnot. And then if I ever get around to it, flowers, but we'll worry about that another day. So just dig it up, get this bit sorted and uh, we'll work our way around. Okay, so yeah, I think I found what might be a recurring theme, which is pipes running across where I need to get to. So we'll see how that goes. But also I uncovered a lost gem that little fern down there i can't remember what it is i'll remember what it is but yeah take him out and pot him up and put him somewhere good so bonus brucey bonus okay that's that in there that looks good that will look good that will survive hopefully um all the dead stuff's gone that's all down there so i've chopped that up into foot long pieces and then when i've given it all a mulch um i'll just drop that on randomly around all the beds because it's woody um just to give critters somewhere to live and we're up three plants now so got the fat cedera there on the top left got the polystichum poly 
um, Plumerson congestion, something like that, which is a really sort of tight, compact fern, almost like a conifer. And then in that yellow, uh, in the one, the grey one next to it, there's actually an old silver fern. So that one's deciduous, but I don't want the roots drying out of these. So I'm going to go and dig up all the dead stuff, dead stuff out the front. Go and pop these in the soil for the meantime um, out there and then uh, get on with the middle bed, I think. Okay, so you can see what we're dealing with out here. I've got the Cat Defender 3000s all over there, so I'll take all of them off. You can see there's a couple of Aspenium Scolopendriums there, the heart's tongue, one there, and then one over just there to the right. Uh, so they can go out there, they're useful plants. These four here, which has got that frond from the Royal Fern on it, they're, they're dead, so get that rid of them. Uh, I've got an old friend, the Saxifraga Stellaniferro, which went a bit mental out the back and that must have been in a bit of soil, so we can make use of that. And then but Brucey Bonus, completely forgot I bought this fern a couple of months ago, a Blechnum Spicant Strippii, Stri Stri Strippetti. Um, so yeah, so I'll dig out what's dead, get rid of that stretch release, uh, this Dixonia can go, but for now just make some space, pull the plants in from the front. Get them in there and then i've got as we do have these old pots where stuff's died and i'll just chuck them out the front garden so i'll get rid of the green and then all the because the soil is really bad it's really dry and everything so um yeah all the old stuff i can just mix in with all of that and make the bed a bit better hopefully so we'll go from there okay so tidied that up a bit got those few plants in there the fat cedar will go in where one of these aspenium is but the next one for me to do out here is going to be because it's such a rain shadow over there, it's under a bay, bay window, under another roof, and then under another roof. And it is bone dry there, so I'm going to put all these big rocks there at the back against the wall, and then sort of work my way off, and if I need to move the flower beds out, I can do, because I might generate more plants out the back like I just did. It's just so that they can stay in soil. Um, yeah, so we'll revisit this in a bit, but time to go back out and sort out the centre bed. Okay, so in this centre bed, the idea is this one that's in front of the conifer, the uh, tassel fern, didn't really like it there. So I'm going to move that back to the left of the canna over there. The Dropterix erythrosaura, which goes lime green in winter, which is the one on the corner there. I'm going to put that to the left of that Lophosauria, somewhere between the Lophosauria and the canna because uh, that will brighten up that sort of dark spot in the winter and then the Lophosauria that's all busted up um, in the full sunbed I'm going to divide that up and hopefully get a clump that I can put in there and then it will marry up with that now I was going to move one of the gingers in where this small conifer is in here because that's just place it in um, and that would look really good because the evening light comes from sort of the you know the, the the norfolk island pine there and it really lights up the leaves but they're not evergreen and the thing is when you sat down on the seats behind i'll mimic it it sort of goes like that and you sort of lose the the fact that there's a space between the two flower beds if you sort of catch my drift uh, obviously i'm a bit close to here now but you, you you know what i mean but that area there if that's sort of herbaceous that's going to be a clear gap because these two ferns won't get too big so um, I've got a Willemi pine which is going in the ground there outside of the flower bed so I could put something permanently where that Norfolk Island pine is but I do like that Norfolk Island pine being there in the um, summer so yeah I'll have a little think on that but we'll get these two moved then we'll chop up the Lophosauria. Uh, think what I'm going to put in here, I was going to put the hibiscus but again really i need a number one here which is something that's because these two ferns either side of it are quite upright so i need something like this which is going to sprawl out over um so i'll have a little think preferably something with a different texture than the feather sort of ferniness uh we'll see what we can find and uh, go from there okay so i've opened up a massive can of worms here basically um so what it is is like i said it's like a domino effect so i want to move this obviously the tassel fern and the erythrosaura they're going to go up here which is fine there's space on the left of the canna for the um uh which one was i going to put there for the tassel fern and then i wanted to, where these two small ferns are here that's a blechnum nudum on the left and a polystick and brawny eye on the right in the center there um 
So I need to get them out of the way. The brawny eye I don't mind chucking in the front because then they can make room for the area through saw. The nudum I definitely want out here because it was like 50, 60, 70 quid. It really didn't like the light there and it doesn't get a lot of light there, just a bit of late morning light. So i.e. I need to put that somewhere um, that's going to be quite dark, which means going to our left. Now the only space I've got available around here really is I was going to take this... Um, a trotter out and divide it up anyway because it's been struggling a little bit and I say that and it actually looks really good at the moment <laughs> so that was one thing I was going to do I was going to take that out and then also this I really need this Clamart uh, Hydrangea Samanii to do well it's it's quite close to the fence and it's quite close to that fatsia so I think if I take this out and divide it up I'll work out what to do with these um, and then I can move that over this way and get it out away from the fence a little bit as well And then it will free this area up and I can sort of play it by ear with other stuff Bit of a heavy heart that because that was actually one of the first plants I put in this the only one that's left apart from the um, Polystichum heron house in there those and that asplenium those are the only three things that have been in there since day one uh, You know the first stuff I put in so now that'll be down to two um so yeah it can't the nudum can't go there so it's going to force my hand on these there's a one foot dixonia on the right next to the fats here this obviously sciathia coming up towards us there's a drop to its wally kiana on the point and then in the middle of all that is a what was a small dixonia antarctica plant it all looks very samey that as you can see so i've been umming and ahhing about taking that middle dixonia out and then i could put the nudum in there and that would be a really good spot because it's sort of quite sort of at the front you know what i mean so people can see it um but yeah i hadn't actually made my mind up completely on that so it's a bit of one of them where it's forcing my hand a little bit but yeah we'll we'll, we'll see what happens um and we'll see how far down this wormhole we go okay it's the morning after things got away from me a little bit yesterday so I think we were up to the point where I was umming and ahhing about taking this small Dixonia out of the middle um, where I have done. You can see that I did decide to do that, but that opened up another massive can of worms because I needed a place for that big Dixonia to go. The only place for it to go at the moment was over in Camellia Corner, um, which means that I ended up clearing out all the bamboo those beds and doing all that as well which means that i needed to free up the pots out the front so i had to do the front and put the ferns in the front that were in those pots either side of the door uh, for somewhere for the bamboo to go into just temporarily so um it's a bit you know straggly that fern at the moment but you can see at the bottom there it is sending out new growth so that will hopefully sort itself out it's pretty much full shade there it's not massively different as in you know you compare the dixonia fronds to the um fatsia leaves that's different uh but you know they the, i think they'll be different enough hopefully anyway um but we'll get to that when we get to it so yeah that that, that one's in there um if we come around to the center bed it's amazing how much work we can really see this uh Sarathia actually he's a beast just about to send uh, a new frond out which is not great timing but as last year I noticed between the Australis which died and the site and the Cooper eyes which these are that didn't the Cooper eye actually stopped growing over winter it kind of went dormant and it didn't throw up any new fronds until the temperature got a bit better whereas the Australis just kept throwing them out and they just kept getting frosted off and then what didn't help the Australis, because the Australis is supposed to be hardier than these, but I think what didn't help it was that I'd edged it in with the Nephrolopis cordifolia each side, and as soon as it got to two degrees, the Nephrolopis died, which opened it up to all the icy cold winds coming in and all that. So, yeah, didn't get around to doing the Atrata to the right of the Fatsia. We'll do that on part two, which will be a couple of weeks. Uh, Fatsia's in there. I'm kind of... <laughs> Hang on, let's go and have a look at the rest of it in a minute. It, but um yeah I've got, I, I think i might have put that in the wrong place so at the back here um we have got i couldn't fit this tassel fern into the left of the um canna there's not enough room there so i'm gonna have to rethink that i may i've got loads of the heart's tongue fern so where i've you can see i did chop the irrigation and just put some blanks on it just to stop uh, insects getting up the pipe um 
so I need to a remember that I've cut that um, but B <coughs> um, yeah I might just put something small in there because I can't get anything bigger in it so this castle fern and the erythrosaurus it's a bit of a toss-up as to which one's actually going to stay in the back garden I just because it was so big and I took two ferns out of this spot I had the room to put this one in I haven't even taken the erythrosaurus out yet so I'll leave that in there just for now while I mull uh, at the back here I've got the I've got a few hibiscuses I've got two which are these sorts um, which are very much more cot uh, cottage gardeny type ones whereas this has got big flowers the size of sort of dinner plates on it uh, not dinner plates like side dinner plates bread plates toast plates i don't know what they are um but that one's in there so <clears throat> the idea of that it's got quite an upright habit that so as we stand back i've done it as mathematically as i can which is basically the canner is a hand width away from the little fern frond thing metal thing and then i've put that one a hand width away that way so that's about as good as that's going to get but the color is quite similar to the canner so i'm hoping that will complement each other well and if you imagine that's going to have a wall of the clematis armandii behind it behind it that should do okay you can see i'll put the bamboo some of the bamboo in the pot there tetrapanax is gone we're going to have a look at that so down here um all i got round to doing was just basically taking that erythrosaur out and putting one of the aspleniums from out the front in there it worked quite well i think because that's going to spill over the side eventually um, and also, although it is a fern, it's completely different to anything that I've got in there. The ginger I've put in there, you can see, just to the right of the chefferer. So he's in there nice. Um, and then we'll figure out what we do with the Norfolk Island pine area uh, at a later date. So the bit that's kind of given me um, food for thought this morning is Camellia Corner. If we come on over... <sighs> it looks so bare doesn't it <laughs> and you know i'm going to put one of those giant honeysuckles so the so the idea is the small dixonia which was out the front is next to the lantern in the corner so the idea is is that that will one day get as big as that one there and sort of take over that corner and then in the middle i'll put that terrace ambrosia in there just for now because it was li looking a little bit worse for wearing the pot so i just popped him in there hopefully he'll survive and i can move him uh, somewhere and then the ginger again just place it in for now but I think in my mind what I'm imagining doing is where the terrace umbrosa is is maybe put this um, cutting of the giant honeysuckle in and then I can send it either side of the octagon and up around and again I'll have to just finish off the octagon there on the right and do the little um, wire outline of the octagon in there um, so that, that, that I can get into that now but eventually hopefully that'll all cover with that if not I can always put another climber in that's hardy um, to cover that uh, so that'll be the Dixonia in the corner the thingy there and then maybe something different a bit taller in where the ginger is this thing's too big um, I, I tried put uh, the idea was to put that's the Wally Kiana from where the hibiscus was so the one that was actually doing well <laughs> um so i did try and put that dixonia in that corner but i couldn't get the tetrapanax in there very well so i figure it's probably better to um put the tetrapanax in where it's supposed to be because that's the sort of feature plant for that and then i can just fill around that. i think the only thing that's kind of messing it up is this time next year hopefully when it's another foot bigger and we can see underneath it i think it'll look a lot better and then i'll just um place it in for these uh, smaller spleniums and that blechnum spicant strapetti um so yeah it's taken over so that dixonia i was actually thinking just a minute ago when i came out um about putting it where that fatsia spider's web is <laughs> because the reason it looked a bit odd from there was that it was three of the same fern all one after the other and there wasn't much difference but if it's up there in that corner i think it's i think it's mainly because this fatsia spider's web's quite small and that thing's so big and that's such a big gap it's kind of tricking me a little bit but yeah i'll have a little think of it i didn't get around to doing any mulching or anything uh, we're going to have a quick look at the front garden now just to see where i got to and then hopefully phase two of this i'll have a think on it for a couple of weeks um and if anything needs moving or i've got any other brilliant ideas uh we'll do it then so we'll go out and have a look there now wrap this up uh and uh yeah go from there 
Okay, so looks a lot better than it did in spite of me ripping up all this and it looking rough on the middle but you can see i've got the two bamboos either side the wife's not particularly happy on that but i haven't got anywhere else from at the moment move that cheese plant out and then yeah so the big rocks that were at the front they're all along the back now that pushes the bed out because of the rain shadow and also acts as cat defenders you can see i've put some cat defenders through it as well and then we just got the two ferns that were in the in the pots out here um, and several of the other ones, the fat cedera there, you can see it, that's the drop to its lepidopoda from where the, uh, I moved that big Dixonia. I've got the two small ferns dotted around in there somewhere. Um, that's the Aphenis from where the Tetrapanix is and then we've got the other hibiscus that was in that area as well. So the idea out here now, there's the royal fern, it looked pretty good that, so it has in the root ball. So I've just put that in there, just, I might keep it and chuck it down here. So what I need to do is, you can see where I've peeled back the um, underlay or the membrane is pull, peel that back all the way up to the end to where the canner is. And then here, uh, basically I want, um, I would like a shrubbery for here or several of them. So like the hibiscuses and things like that, because it's going to be quite a thin bed that because the missus will just knock them over if I put anything in there. So I'm kind of thinking shrubbery, fern, shrubbery, fern, shrubbery, fern, shrubbery, fern until we get to here. And then because this is all in front of the window, just some low ferns uh, and whatnot else. And I want to get loads of flowery type stuff, you know, like just standard fuchsias and lavenders and all this that and the other as well just for the birds and the bees or the bees mainly and other stuff so yeah that wraps it all up um hope you're having a good time i'll see you on the next one